Hello and welcome to a new tutorial. I'm Mr23 and today I'm going to show you how I created this photo manipulation. First thing, I have this picture with uh, one of my friends. She's a friend of mine and um, I want to select her from this background and I'm going to match her position and perspective to this building. We are starting by selecting her from this background. There are some different ways how you can do that. One of the ways is selecting object so you can have the object selection tool and Photoshop will select her from the background and then you press the mask tool and it will do something like that. Or you can use the pen tool. I use always the pen tool and you can start from the bottom let's say and you can have a selection. I will not do this now because it's a boring process but if you use the pen tool let's move this really fast. It's not really accurate but let me show you how I did it. As I said it's not accurate but I want to show you how I did in the hair part. So on the hair part I selected around it not the hair exactly. So I did something like that on the hair part. Alright, so after you do this, let's select this area also. Okay, let's zoom out, take the path selection tool or press A and select everything and then right click on the screen and choose make selection and then press the mask tool. As you can see, this is our selection. Now double click on the mask and let me show you here on the hair part, take the second brush, refine edge brush tool and just play around with it. If you draw here, if you brush with that brush, as you can see, it will des deselect the white areas and it will keep only the black areas. Okay, so you can use that refine edge brush tool where you have the white parts. Press OK. And now our selection looks much better. So this is how I did this selection. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. All right, so I have the selection already made. So this is the selection. So I flipped her horizontally because normally she was like that. And I tried to find a better position for her in my background image. Now to find the best position for the woman, let's take a really nice brush. It's a perspective grid brush. And now let's find the horizon line, which I think is uh, around here. This is the horizon line. So I only click once on the screen and it will add this perspective grid. Then I can find the best position for my layer. So I'm selecting my layer and I'm trying to find a best position for her. So this is what I did here. Okay, with this perspective, I'm going to erase it because I selected my subject from another background. It doesn't look realistic because we don't have shadows. So we need contact shadows. When she is sitting on that building, she should have some shadows. So I've added some shadows and now everything looks much, much better. So to add shadows is very important when you do a composition like this because otherwise it doesn't look realistic. So the shadows are really, really important. I added a contact shadow. It's really easy. You set the blending mode to multiply and then you take the brush tool and with the brush tool selected, let's select a soft brush tool and then you start to paint. Let's create a new layer. You start to paint behind the subject with a color which is close to the original shadows of the background. So I'm starting to paint behind the subject, something like that, and set the blending mode to multiply. All right, so this is how I created this contact shadow. And then here on the bottom, I needed some other shadows, something like that, because she is casting another shadow here on the bottom part. So this is the contact shadow and the second shadow here below. And then another small shadow that I wanted to have on top of everything, which is uh, this shadow. This is a small shadow that I wanted to have on my subject because I wanted to shadow to be more intense. So this is with the shadows and you must have shadows so this looks more realistic. Let me show you what I did here. So this new layer that I have, uh, I created a new layer. So basically what I did is duplicate this layer. So press Ctrl or Command J. So my original layer, I duplicated Ctrl or Command J. So and then I hold Alt or Option and I place this new layer inside my original layer. And then I deleted the layer mask. With this layer selected, 
go to filter and choose blur surface blur all right so as you can see it adds some blur to my subject then i took the smudge tool with the strength set around 10 percent and i started to use it on my subject to make the skin really soft so when you use the smudge tool be sure that you draw in the same direction as the shadows of the subject are if you have a shadow from the top to the bottom don't go to the right or to the left because it will mess up the image all right so this is what i did here and then i adjusted the colors by taking image adjustment and hue and saturation from here i change the colors i choose another hue on my original selection i have this white area here and on my smudge tool i don't have it because i used the clone stamp tool let me show you it's really easy you just create a new layer and take the clone stamp tool press alt and select this area from the dress let's say this area closest to that area that you want to clone so basically what clone stamp does is taking this area from here and it will clone it where you want it to draw then I use the curse adjustment layer and I have changed a bit the colors of the subject to match them better with my background. Yeah. So I went and changed red, green and blue. Then I use another curves adjustment layer and add some shadows. As you can see here, I have a, a black mask and on my first layer, I have a white mask. Here, I wanted to have an inverted mask. Let me show you why. So if I want to add shadows, I want to add shadows only on a certain part of my subject. I don't want the shadows to affect the whole subject. So I added this curves adjustment layer and then on the mask, I press Ctrl I or Ctrl Command I and now take the brush tool be sure that you have soft brush selected and the flow is set around 10 percent then go to your subject be sure the white color is selected and just start to paint as you can see it will add the shadows only on the area where you paint not on the whole image so this is really important because sometimes you want to have shadows only on some parts not on the whole subject so this is what i did on this layer all right so this is the second one and then I added a selective color and I have changed the blacks and neutrals. So I have this winter feel to my subject. Then I went and add more shadows but this time I'm using exposure. I did the same things as I did here on the cars adjustment layer with the black mask not the white mask. So the shadow should affect only this part not the whole subject and then I added some light on the left part with the same process but let me show you how I did those lights. I created a new hue and saturation adjustment layer. I press colorize and then I increase the lightness a lot and also the saturation and I have chosen color which is close to the original light of my background which is something like that and let's say this is one of the colors let's say this is one all right so this is the lights that I want to use and then of course I inverted this mask by pressing ctrl I or command and I and then I took the brush tool and I started to paint on the left side all right so I started to paint like that this adds some lights on my subject so after I finished, I double click on the layer and then I use the blend if method here on the bottom. Just hold alt or option and drag this slider to the right. And what it does, the background colors, it will fade out much better. It will help me to blend this light better with my subject. This is what I did with this layer, the lights. And then I have desaturated a bit the colors of my subject because they were too reddish so as you can see with this layer it's more desaturated and then i have added more shadows by using levels this time to my right side of the subject and at the end i added some lights and shadows to my whole subject let me show you how i did this so you go to layer new and choose layer from here and then set the blending mode to soft light and be sure to check this 50 percent gray be sure that you add it inside your layer with a girl so hold alt and press between the layers here all right and now if you take the black color with the brush selected you will add shadows exactly as the burn tool from here is doing so exactly the same thing but i prefer more this method if you draw on the subject it will add shadows so you 
must have these shadows and lights adjustments all the time because otherwise your picture will look flat so you don't want that so just add shadows where you think the shadows should be all right and then you can add lights using the white color on the same layer so you can add lights where you think the subject needs lights then here on top i added a bit of shadow this one yeah because our shadows are below the subject and i wanted a small shadow that it's on top on my subject because it looks more realistic and then i drew some hair on the side of my subject so this is the hair that i drew let me show you again this technique my latest tutorial was how to draw for on an animal and now you can use the same technique the same brush to draw hair on a person it's really nice and i always use it because it looks more realistic let's create a new layer and take the fur brush and now with this brush i'm going to press alt and choose a color from the original hair closest to the side and then if i let me pick another color if i drew here as you can see it will add the hair of course it doesn't look nice you have to play around let me delete this so play around with opacity reduce the flow to something around 50 or 20 percent and choose a color and just start to draw and it will add some hair to your subject this is something that i really love to do to my composition i desaturated the color of the dress on this layer as you can see it was too reddish and i desaturated because i love it more like that let's go to the background as you can see the background has the same focus now i want the focus to be only on the person that i added go to the background choose filter and from filter go to blur gallery and choose fill blur all right so this is the field blur now i wanted to have the focus on her so on the center i added zero blur here on the bottom i added a 50 percent blur because i want to have the strongest blur and of course on the buildings i added some small blur also now the focus is only on my person not on the whole image so I think now with, with this field blur the composition looks more nice because the original background had some cables and now because I place my subject on top of the building as you can see it looks like she's sitting on those cables and I don't want that. So I just drew some cables it's really easy I drew some lines with the brush tool here on top so those are the lines that I drew it's really easy with a brush just draw a simple line and then add some gaussian blur so let me show you so take the brush tool and be sure that the hard brush is selected and the size should be around two percent and just press let's let's hide the original cables that i drew just press here on a side and then hold shift and go to the left and this is your line and go to filter and choose blur and gaussian blur all right so this is the way I drew those cables. Then I use selective colors. You can find this one on uh, the adjustment layers on the bottom. And then I just played with the blacks and neutrals. Because I wanted to have a winter feel to my image, I use this selective color and I changed the tones to more bluish ones. All right. So then I added a camera row filter, this one. So let me show you how to do this. So press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and I and do a screenshot of everything and then always convert it to a smart object smart object is really important when you have filters applied to your layer because you can always come back to the filter settings so those are the settings that i use in my camera row filter i wanted to keep that winter feel and then at the end i use some grain and i really love to use the grain let me show you let's zoom in as you can see with the grain applied it will blend better the background with my subject if i have a bigger grain you'll see it better it will give a sand look something like that to my image so i keep this really low something around four but it's there and it will help me to blend better the image that i use in a composition then i have placed my logo on the bottom part and then i have used some photos on, of some snow and i have set it the blending mode to screen this is my uh, tutorial for today how to use a person from a different background and use it to have this photo composition if you like my tutorial please don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you next time